was in Cascadia Archive, the version 2024, and one of the last presentations was by Jacqueline Nollis. Uh, she showed a really cool service that I would like to talk about. That is a, a Google Cloud Run. Uh, it was the first time I heard about it, and she mentioned that it was um, pretty cool how it, it scales on demand and shuts down uh, if you're not using it. And uh, even when it's running, it's, it's fairly cheap to run. So overall, it looked like a very promising uh, tool for the kinds of things that sometimes I do. Like that right now, I need to host the Shiny app that might have um, you know, some, some load to handle. And uh, it, it's great, this service that you know, can scale up and down as necessary and try to kind of save you as much money as possible. <coughs> so uh, um, Jacqueline shared a repo that hosts a super basic Shiny app that you know, uh, is containerized. And if your app uh, it lives in a GitHub repository and is containerized, then it's super easy to deploy on on uh, on that service on Google Cloud Run. Um, I have uh, another app uh, that I would like to deploy there just to um, to try things out. Uh, the focus now is going to be mostly to show how to set up Google, Google Cloud Run so that um, as, a, as a continuous integration system, where right, whenever you push something to uh, your repo to your app then uh, this service builds it and serves it um, and, and can handle demand so um, uh, i prefer uh, to well for, for apps that are on um, on in production uh, on pretty much any app that i build uh, i like to um, structure them as r packages so um, what i'm going to be showing in a minute it comes from from this this book by hadley wickham the master in shiny book there are other books also that cover, you know, how to structure uh, shiny apps for production. But I believe this, this is a, a good way, um, one that I'm very used to just from building packages for other purposes. So, you know, I can reuse it, the tools that I know um, for um, just building our packages. Now I can apply them to building a shiny app. So uh, I'm going to jump here to the terminal. Here is my app. It's just a little, a little project. Let me show you what it looks like uh, so I have my app.r file uh, typically uh, an r.r uh, an file if it's not hosted in a in an r package it would contain the app itself but because it is in an r package the app is going to be hosted here in run app uh, so I can show you what that looks like uh, in our uh, run app uh, so this is a very simple app that uh, does nothing, nothing but print hello world to the screen. Uh, there is no kind of server, um, and you know at the end it calls shiny app. Um, so there is this little function that wraps uh, the shiny app. Uh, the function name is run underscore app, uh, and that is the recommendation of um, the in the book. So just pretty much following what, what I read there. Um, because uh, we need the shiny package, I'm gonna import it. Uh, this is not generally a good practice, but for building Shiny apps as our packages is not a bad one. Um, instead of uh, you know, importing from Shiny specific functions, here we're importing the whole thing. Uh, for Shiny apps, typically you use many, many, many functions from a Shiny package, so uh, it becomes kind of tedious to import one by one. Um, and also, uh, this is not going to function as a package. The package is just the, the structure for you, the developer, to build it, to test it, to check it and then to deploy it. So next I'm gonna focus on the deployment part. So what is that app.r uh, file then uh, for? Um, app.r is simply going to um, do a few things. I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. But first I'm gonna do this. So uh, if you develop packages, um, typically you do dev tools load all. So dev tools load all actually is re-exporting uh, the function uh, load all from package load so here I'm calling package load itself uh, and loading everything in this directory and then calling the function run app uh, so once the package is loaded then that that function that we define in the R directory then becomes available and and then you know it, it works so that's what uh, this app to R looks like these are the contents and uh, what is here at the top is uh, just to set which is the port and the hosts of this app so this is not generally necessary for uh, building an app in a package, but it is important for deploying it to Google Cloud Round. And that 
has been what you know cost me the, the most nightmares in trying to set this up so pretty much the whole video is, is for that you know for my future self or for anyone of you out there that might want to save yourself some time uh, trying to figure this out so um, this is already you know ex shown in the in the app by by juggling but uh, you know I was mm, maybe you know we can use 30, 38 38 which is the port that um, is typically the default of uh, of the rocker shiny image um, but you know I tried a few things tried to set the port to the 38 38 and didn't get it to work out so 88 80, 80 will be so the other thing that you know we need to um, to deploy this as a package is um, so in the description file we need to make sure that you know package load is uh, suggested right and shiny uh, is imported right because it's imported because it's used in the R directory and package load is not used in the R directory itself but uh, we need it when the app deploys we need it to be installed in the, in the environment so the, the trick is gonna be to just you know use it here in suggests and then um, when we you know I'm gonna show you in, in my docker file you know what things look like so the docker file here what, what it's doing is creating an environment that will deploy this app so we start from the image rocker shiny the latest version of it in this case which is good for me so it comes with the our shiny package install and also comes with a uh, shiny server so uh, not only we can deploy it uh, this this app to um, go um, cloud run but also we can kind of play with it on on docker on docker itself here locally so i'm going to show that in a minute um, then what we're doing is copying everything in this directory to this other directory so the server shiny server app directory and then you know we say we want to work from from that directory so that when we do something like this well actually you know this is setting up the environment so what we are doing here is you know just installing uh, the package pack which then allows us to in a very simple way just call him backpack it allows us to install the package that you know this app uh, is um, you know is contained in and all its dependencies all of that you do it with pack pack but for that you need first to install pack right so uh, and then we expose the port 8080 which is um, at least as far as i can tell almost a requirement uh, for the google cloud run i did try to change it in in the settings but it didn't seem to to work and then finally you know once that environment has been um, has been um, created we're gonna simply call the, the 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 script app.r which you know as we saw before is gonna uh, so remember the the port 8080 is already exposed and uh, if we show you again the contents of uh, r then of app r then uh, we're gonna be loading all the contents of the package which will include that run app function and then call that function with the options for 8080 and host you you use it as well so uh, we now can uh, do a docker build uh, we can tag this as um, my app uh, and let's build with the docker file that is contained here here i need to enter my, my password and um, it's not take much because it's a super small app it doesn't install very much stuff just shiny and package load um so you know, bear with me a few more seconds So what we are doing here is simply to demonstrate that um, the app um, is working fine, that we can run it on uh, in a Docker container, and if it is truly uh, and successfully containerized, then uh, Google Cloud Run should be able to host it in its port 8080. Uh, just a little more. good so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do the docker run uh, so this is gonna be interactive but we're gonna, let's just remove it after after we finish and uh, we need to say the port is gonna be uh, 8080 to 8080 and the image is gonna be my app right so the one that I, I just created uh, so this as, as you we expected is is listening into the host 0000 at the port 8080 so if i click there uh, here's my app hello world 
interface at LinkedIn. <laughs> so now the goal is to get the same thing, but running on Google Cloud Run. So uh, we need to um, have a GitHub repo for this. Let me see, so this is on ch browse. So if I browse to GitHub, you can see that, yes, I do have a repo. It's in my uh, user account, it's called my app. So this is what I need to pass uh, to Google Cloud Run. <coughs> So that every commit to main uh, triggers a new a new build on the app and, and it's served. So um, this is where you want to be. Google Cloud. Uh, there is a bunch of services. In particular, Google Cloud Run is the one that will be useful for these purposes. Uh, and you need to create a service. So you click here, create a service. <coughs> and what I want to do here <coughs> is to set up a uh, con to continuously deploy from a GitHub repository. So let's do that and set up with Google Cloud Build. So this little interface here that allows me to select a repository. Uh, so I'm gonna start typing uh, my app and there it is. So I'm gonna repo in my app. So that's the repo that I just show you. Simply click here on next and say, okay, what I want is the Docker file. Oof, this one here, right? So the Docker file is gonna be the one that will create the environment for for this app um, and I mean I'm tempted to click create but I'm pretty sure yes I need this one here authentication is required so we have to say which of the two options um, everything else I believe is fine so I'm gonna click here on create it's gonna take a little while and uh, and then you know all these things are gonna start moving tick 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 here right and when it gets to the end uh, I would expect the app to be um, to be uh, available in a URL. So which URL? So this is already kind of pretty bullet in there. There it is. So that's the URL that I will need to kind of be looking for. So let's add it here in a new tab. So right now it's there is nothing there, right? Because the app is still not deployed. But uh, if we um, if you're patient, uh, this will you know complete in a little bit, and then. It should be served in that uh, in that URL. So if that's the case, then uh, you already have all the structure that you need to to do what I, I just did. It's just a matter of kind of changing the contents of that package so that it serves a useful app, and not a hello world app. But uh, the infrastructure is you know should be exactly the same. And again, the takeaway, the most important takeaway here, I think, is the the port part because that's the one that you know gave me the most headaches. Here I'm speaking mostly to my future self. So the idea was to just to kind of recap that um, uh, to in my Docker file uh, to you know, expose 8080 and in my app dot R uh, to use this uh, these options, right? The option to uh, set the port and the host of the shiny app. Um, so with that I'm gonna pause the video so I don't want make you wait while this completes and then show you when this is uh, done in a little in a little while okay I'm back here so when I uh, I pause the video it took another maybe one or two more minutes uh, for this fairly small app and uh, so the the thing completed and now uh, the URL should work let's click there and see what happens there is so there's my, my hello world so that, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? So um, that is it. And you can close uh, you know, this video here. But what I'm gonna do now is make a little change in my app. So let's change my R uh, run app to say, I don't know, hello world in, in, in caps locks. So we see, you know, how the um, the continuous integration works. So you know, I'm gonna commit, update app, and push. So when I push to GitHub, uh, if I go to my service here, uh, that should let's see here my service. That should trigger, I believe, a new build. Let's see where are my builds. I think I need to click there. Well, my app is thinking here, right? So I think that's our uh, build history. Maybe that's where I need to click. Still getting 
familiar with this and there you go so this this last one bit here was the previous commit and now this one here is the commit that I just pushed just confirm exactly so the commit that now moves the the message from title case from uh, sentence case to uppercase um, oh and there it is uh, let's see no, not yet uh, here that's where it was so the app is still deploying um, but you get the idea right so the idea is that now everything is connected whenever you do a change on your app you don't need to worry about Google Cloud Run anymore you just push your commit and as long as it, you know it's in the in the main in the branch that you configured then um, uh, it's going to be deployed right this uh, you know that that's is, is going to be the trigger for this this deployment um, all right i'm going to pause it again and come back when when it's done to show you and then say goodbye all right so this uh, completed so now if i so they took another minute maybe so if i refresh i'm hoping this yes there you go so hello world in capital letters all right so with that um you know i i'm kind of very quickly summarize what i've uh, we have achieved here so in, in uh, cascadia conf and i heard a talk by jacqueline novice that talked about um google cloud run which is an amazing service for multiple things but you know one is to build shiny apps which you can uh, set up to deploy continuously. And the most important trick uh, is uh, that, you know, you need uh, to containerize your application. Uh, you can build uh, a very simple Docker file that looks more or less like this. And the most important trick is that you need to, to uh, work on port 8080. And so uh, if you're building your app as, um, as uh, another package, then the trick is to uh, pass the options uh, port and host uh, so that uh, the port is, is 8080 and, and host is yeah, 0000. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that my future self will be glad to not spend the whole day trying to figure this out. <laughs>